Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and you know what? This video was going to be an unboxing of the Baofeng UV17R. Um, I opened it up, I got all the video on it, you know, unboxing it, putting it together, uh, configuring it, getting it to work with Chirp, I had it all. And I was getting ready to uh, pretty much edit the whole thing together, and I before I did it, I said, you know, I probably should take a look at what the output is and make sure that all the filters that keep everything on the fundamental frequency and not drifting off to, you know, uh, other areas of the band or other bands, everything's working within part 97 rules. So I got it all set up and I started checking it and... I I was terrified. Um, I mean, it, yeah, I'm not even going to say any more. Watch this video. I go through the test, how I did it. I talk about where to find information on what the specification should be for the radios that you're using in order to test it yourself. I used a signal hound, uh, which I own. Uh, I could have done the same thing with the tiny SA. Uh, it might probably wouldn't have been as accurate, but when I say as accurate, it might have been a half a dB off, maybe a dB off. And you know what? I, uh, for what we do as amateur radio operators, that probably would be good enough to do just to check it. So. If you've bought a UV-17R, before you take it out and start using it seriously, please test your radio. And if it doesn't pass, you know, we're amateur radio operators. It's our responsibility to only use radios within our license guidelines. Uh, so, you know... Um, we don't. We can go back and try to blame a manufacturer, but we're supposed to know. That's part of being an amateur radio operator. Anyway, with all that, let's see. Oh yeah, gotta ask. Please, if you're not subscribed, subscribe for me, will you? Uh, getting those subscribers up, get my information out to more people. And of course, if you like my video, click like. Give me that thumbs up. All right. Uh, other than that. Here's what I got for you. Okay, so this is my test rig over here. Um, I've got some radios in the background. We're going to hook some of these up and show you the different readings. Uh, this is my spectrum analyzer, and this is my tracking generator, and they're tied in together. Over here is my attenuator so I don't burn up my spectrum analyzer. I've got plans for how to make these in another video that I'll link in the description. I'm going to go ahead and change my camera angle so I can show you what we're going to do to get set up for this test. All right, so what we're going to do here is we are going to hook these things up to this to actually see if this is actually 40 dB. It's important that we at least get kind of close on what our pad is here. Why do we have this? This will handle 20 dB, but 20 dB is only 100 milliwatts, and my little HTs put out 5 watts. I'll blow the back end right out of this if I feed directly into it, so I have to pad it uh, with an attenuator. I made the, this attenuator, and I had the plans for this attenuator as well as the specs and the how-to and all that, and I'll pass that on to you, okay, in the comments with the instructions in the video. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tracking generator here, and it's hooked to this cable, okay, and then I am going to hook my spectrum analyzer directly to it like this. All right, I'll just kind of put this over here so it doesn't disappear, and now I'm going to switch to the setup for our... Um, Spectrum analyzer. And you see this little white line here. Okay, this is 0 dB. And what I need to do is I need to basically tell it that 
that is zero. So I clicked on store through and now I know where zero is. Okay, so where do I go from here? Well, what I want to do is now I'm going to switch back over to the other camera. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and now hook the attenuator in. So I'm going to pull this off here like so. And I am going to connect to this. And all this is is my attenuator and it has a direct pass through to this 50 ohm dummy load. This is the access or pull port and we're going to just put that right here hooked directly up as a pass through into there. And then let's go ahead and switch our mode again to take a look at this and now I can see down here that that is the attenuation that I'm getting and that works out too according to this 41 dB so that's pretty close so now I'm going to switch this over but first I'm going to unhook the cable here let me switch back I'm going to unhook the cable that I have hooked up here to the tracking generator. And we're going to completely take that out of the circuit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here and tell it, uh, tell the software here for the, um, for the spectrum analyzer that I have a reference level offset of 41 dB. All right. Now, over here, I've got to change my uh, I got to change my analyst mode over here to sweep and there I go. And I want to verify my reference level is 40 dB. So that's the top half of this. I have this RLO that's telling me that I have adjusted um, that setting. Okay. Now, first off, let's see how close we are. So what I am going to do here is I am going to take the Baofeng right there. There it is. There's that nice new Baofeng UV uh, 17R and I am going to hook it up to the spectrum analyzer and I do that just by connecting it to here okay just like that and now I have it all hooked up here okay now how does this work so when I key this, it's going to go out here into the pass-through to the 50 ohm dummy load. Then my tap down here that's attenuated 41 dB is going to come out of here and go all the way around to the spectrum analyzer to be red. And I'm just going to turn this on. Welcome. And, Welcome. and I am at... 146 megahertz. Well, okay, so let me go ahead and key the radio and take a look. And there I am right on frequency. You see that little uh, triangle with one on it up there. And if you look up in the corner right up there in the very corner, you're going to see that I'm putting out about 37.7 uh, dB which is a little over five watts. So that's all working good. Now, let's talk about what this radio is supposed to be doing as far as rejection is concerned as per the FCC. All right, so here we are at 97.307 emission standards for amateur radio, okay? So this talks all about it shall not occupy more bandwidth than and blah, 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 blah. But for the tests that we're going to be conducting, I am moving all the way down to 
let me give you the one uh, 97.307 E as in echo. And let me get this up where we can see it. The mean power of any spurious emission from a station transmitter or external RF power amplifier transmitting on a frequency between 30 and 225 megahertz. We are a two meter radio, so that falls in that guideline. Must be at least 60 dB below, but that's deceiving. We got to go down here. We'll skip down just a little bit to here. For a transmitter with a mean power of 25 watts or less right there 25 watts or less so that's a 5 watt radio this is what we have to deal with the mean power of any spurious emission supplied to the antenna transmission line must not exceed 25 microwatts and must be at least 40 db so it cannot exceed 25 microwatts and it must be at least 40 dB below the mean power of the fundamental emission. The fundamental emission is the frequency you're transmitting on. Okay, just, uh, just for full clarification. Where are these going to be the highest? Well, they're going to be highest on the harmonics, right? So, as far as that goes, uh, they give one last thing, and it says right here that, uh, but need not be reduced below power of 10 microwatts, okay? So we know actually anything that's under 10 microwatts is great. Now, what constitutes 10 microwatts? What constitutes 25 microwatts? Well, we need to do a little math. Okay, so I'm going to pull up my calculator here. We'll drag it over and I will full screen it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the simple math. We're going to take 10 times log 1,000. times 0 0.000025, okay, that would be 25 microwatts minus 16 dB, okay? So, minus 16 dB and and 40 dB under the actual fundamental power, okay? Now, since we're doing the math, right? Let's look at 10 microwatts, and my goodness, minus 20. What a surprise, huh? So minus 20, and these are dB ratings, right? Okay, so we know what our maximum dB needs to be, right? Or it has to be under our maximum dBm. And we also know that it cannot, there has to be at least a 40 dB difference if it's not less than minus 20 dB. All right, let's go back to the analyzer. All right, so let's just verify now. I'm going to squeeze the transmitter, and there we go. And our uh, dBm for power is about 37.4 uh, uh, dBm. Okay, so I'm good with that. Let's change the mode. Let's change the analyst mode. We're going to look at harmonics, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and key this, and we're going to get a display. There we go. All right, and I am going to make it just uh, capture this. Okay, now I can unkey, and I'm not going to burn up my radio. Well, 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 my goodness gracious me, what do we got going here? So... 
down at the very bottom here is our information. And I am going to attempt, I don't know if I can, uh, you know what? I will probably run a magnifying glass over this a little bit. But for what I can do with this right now, I'm going to basically take a look at these numbers here, okay, as best as we can. So, what we have is, number one is our fundamental frequency, which is 144 megahertz, or excuse me, 146 uh, megahertz. Our amplitude shows us 36.7 dBm, okay? Here's our second harmonic at 292 megahertz. <laughs> that is running 11.89 dB. Not negative 11 dB. Positive 11 dB. And it is only 24 dBc is the difference, right? It's only 24.8 dB under the fundamental power. This is a huge fail. I call this no filter at all on this radio. Even if I look at the third harmonic, it's still only minus 13.5 dB. So it does not meet the minimum spec on the third harmonic. So, for lack of a better word, the radio fails, okay? Um, and not a little bit. It fails a lot, all right? And just so you can see the difference, okay? I'm going to try to drag this back down so you can see the uh, top section of this. I am going to set this thing back up on auto. All right. And I am going to swap the radio out. Okay. Now, I am going to hook up. Let me grab it. I am going to hook up. I am going to hook up this, okay? This is a Yesu radio right there. I'm going to hook this up, okay? So, give me a second to get back to the right screen. Okay. There we go. Let me get this hooked up. All right, let's check our fundamental frequency first. Here we go. There it is. And I know you can't see it. This thing's reading about 38 uh, dBm. Okay, now let's go ahead and we will take a look at our harmonics. And here we go. All right, I froze that shot. Quite a difference, huh? Take a look at this. Here we are at our fundamental, and look at this, just from the chart, there's minus 20, right? So as long as we're below minus 20, we don't have to worry about how many dB drop it is. But let's look at those numbers real quick. There we go. All right. So what do we got? Well, man, we're looking from the fundamental frequency, right? Right here. We're looking at the second harmonic at minus 27.8 dBm. Remember, our goal is under minus 20 and all the rest of the bets are off. And we've hit that easily on this radio. Um, and again, 65 minus 65 dB from the fundamental frequency. So, you know what? This radio works great. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit more about all this. Well, those are the results, and uh, the results in my mind were poor enough that I sent both the radios that I purchased back. I did purchase two separate radios from two separate online vendors through Amazon. Um, and I did test a third radio that uh, a friend of mine had purchased. And uh, they all tested the same. Uh, they all had that issue with the uh, 1.25 meter band uh, with that particular uh, harmonic. And they all had the 440 harmonic issue. So I don't know what Balfang was thinking. Maybe I'm missing something, uh, but that does not meet spec. Now, a very good friend of mine by the name of John uh, K. brought up a question when I was showing these results to a group of my peers uh, at one of the meetings that I go to. And he said, well, yeah, you bought the radio and it's got the compliance sticker on it from the FCC. Uh, so if you're using it, is are you breaking the law? Are you breaking Part 95? And my answer, you know, sometimes John asks questions maybe contrary to what he believes, to inspire a conversation amongst a group. And uh, whether that was the case here or not, I don't know what his true opinion is. But, you know, between you, me, and the wall, it really doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter what my opinion is, okay? Uh, it matters what your opinion is because you're the one that has to defend yourself or uh, exonerate yourself uh, based on the information that you have. My opinion is as follows. We are amateur radio operators licensed by the federal government. Uh, and our license allows us tremendous leniency to experiment and play. We can build transmitters and operate on them without any inspection at all from, you know, the FCC. Uh, the rules state that we have to only transmit within our bands and that the radio transmission that we are making exists within the guidelines of Part 97, which includes the spurious emissions rules that are given to us as guidance. So my opinion is by transmitting on this radio, um, you know, you're probably in violation of the license. But you know what? I'm not a lawyer. I don't work for the FCC. And I don't judge. So work with this however you feel comfortable. And, hey, even though I checked three of these, they might not all be bad. Okay? What I'd encourage everyone to do at this point is if you have a tiny SA... The tiny SA has the ability to do this test. You don't need, you know, thousands of dollars worth of test equipment to evaluate it. Uh, be careful with the tiny SA. It only will handle a 10 dB input. At the end of this video, there'll be a video to choose from that talks about making that uh, attenuator that I was showing. So that way you don't blow your toys up, okay? Hey, with that, that's all I got. Um, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to my channel. And until then, my name is Stu, AG6AG. And you know what? 73, I hope to hear you on the air.